Yo, what's up guys hope you guys are doing good. So today we are going to see what if Naruto has a power to travel different realms part 1. Hope you will enjoy this video so before we start please like the video and subscribe to our channel and hit bell notification it motivates me to upload more fanfics for my lovely audience. So let's get started. Heads hung low, the people of Konoha wept as they carried the body of their deceased Nanadime Hokage, Uzumaki Naruto. From humble beginnings to grand achievements people remembered fondly the days that were sent under his protection. They remembered his beaming smill which seemed to make a light of the darkest periods. Not only was he concerned with the needs of the many, but he took special care of the needs of the few. He was not the perfect Hokage, but he gave more of himself than anyone could ask for. Konoha finally had to admit, they were wrong about the blonde. For all their desire to see him fail, he rose above their hatred each and every time. None could have been more passionate than him. He was the type that could make friends of enemies, he could instill hope in the hopeless, and he could give strength to the weak. He was Konoha's brightest son. Just as all the Hokage before him, he continued to protect the will of fire. Friends and family grieved. Those whom he had known since his days as a child watched as his wooden casket swept through the village held in the arms of the Anbu. Uzumaki Boruto, son of Uzumaki Naruto, held his little sister, Uzumaki Himawari, daughter of Uzumaki Naruto, and his mother, Uzumaki Hanada, wife, lover, and friend of Uzumaki Naruto, in his arms. They cried and sobbed as they watched the one they loved pass them by. Boruto did not cry, not yet. His father had left the family to him now and he had to show the same type of strength that his father had shown time and time again. There would be time to weep in silence, but for now, his family needed to grieve. He was sure that without him, they would collapse. His body passed by Inazuka Kiba, Abarame Shino, Akamichi Choji, Akamichi Karui, Yamanaka Ino, Nara Shikamaru, Nara Termari, Rock Lee, and Tenten. He passed by Gara, Tsunade, Karabi, Ai, Darui, Mei, Kuritsuchi, and Chojuro. They watched his body. They tried to not tremble. They tried to not show weakness, but the strains of tears would not stop. It seemed like an unrealistic dream to have the blonde cage gone. At the moment, they would have given anything to have him shouting them over to have ramen with him. Their children watched him go in silence and respect. Though they did not know him as well as their parents, they still had nothing but good things to say about him. He was a kind man and an even kinder leader. His body ascended the steps of the Hokage mansion. At the very top, beneath the falling rain, stood his teammates and even more family. Haruno Sakura, Uchiha Sasuke, Sai, Hitaki Kakashi, and, Captain Yamato. Next to Sasuke and Sakura was Uchiha Sarada. She had been adamant to appear with her family and no one turned her down. To their side was also the Hachidaim of Konoha, Serutobi Konohamaru. Next to him, stood Ichiraku Tyuki and Ayame, the ramen owners. They walked his casket be placed on the roof of the Hokage mansion. Everyone watched and Konohamaru, with a heavy heart, moved forward. I knew Naruto Nichin for many years. He always had a way of making you feel great about yourself. He always instilled in us the best qualities that any human being ever could. He taught me, us, about the importance of the will of fire and I know that he is going to be watching not just over Konoha, but he will be watching over the whole world to see the peace that we have fought and bled for to be realized one day. I hope to continue to live up to his expectations and yours. Our hearts are heavy, but we must never forget the wonderful times that Naruto Ni spent with us. He would ask that we carry on as we were. I know I will miss him greatly and so will all of you, but we have kept Konoha standing in the face of adversity and we will continue to do so. Now, we return our fellow leader, father, and friend to the paradise where he may meet the parents, that he never had. Konohamaru announced. No one said anything. They were all silent. Needless to say, but it was a very melancholy affair. 
only Naruto's closest friends watched him be lowered into the ground along with the bodies of the other cage. He was quickly, but respectfully buried. Slowly, one by one, people offered their condolences to Naruto's family before walking away. It took a good portion of the day, but Boruto managed to let his mother and sister return home. He did as well. Night settled over Konoha. There was not a speck of sound to be heard. However, the ground around the burial site began to rumble. It quickly exploded. A hand crawled from the hole in the ground and pulled itself up. A mess of blonde hair shadowed itself in the moonlight. When there are no more fucks to give, Uzumaki Naruto shall give a fuck. What the fuck? Where is everybody? A middle-aged man asked. He dusted off his clothes and stood to his feet. You died, you idiot. Remember that, that was our plan. A deep feral voice said rather angrily. The man blinked before he looked around. He noticed he had been buried along with the rest of the cage. His blue eyes gazed over the land. He took a step from his tomb and released a pent-up cough. Bending his head down, he brushed the dirt off his hair. Honestly, could people please make bigger caskets? It was hard to move in those damn things. A look of realization appeared on his face. Oh right, we did say we would do that. So, what do you think? I think I pulled off the young, dejected, attention-seeking orphan very well. How about you? He asked, a smile on the face of his lips. Red eyes gleamed and he heard something akin to a snort. Nine tails brushed themselves through the air before landing gently on the ground. K. You acted like an idiot. Well, an even bigger idiot than usual. Also why the Hyuga? Why not the priestess? The girl from that all-female village? Hell, why not the movie actress? Why the Hyuga? You could have literally had anyone. The voice boomed, making the elder man rub his ears a tad. Honestly, for being a beast of eternal hate and anger, Kurama still had that stupid Tsunere personality that the blonde man was never able to get over. W-H-O the hell are you calling a Tsunere, brat? The voice roared once again. Case in point. However, the man cleaned his ears of the volume and stretched out of his back. Hey, you were the one who was all, the princess and the commoner is the classic story. Why not go for it? I was following your lead, Kurama. He countered back. The nine-tailed fox growled, but released a huff and lowered himself to the ground. He opened one of his eyes to gaze into the outside world. I didn't specifically mean the Hyuga brat. How much royalty have you encountered on this trip alone? Exclamation mark. Never mind all of the countless times you did on your other trips. For being the one who many praised with creativity and ingenuity, you really can't think outside the box, can you? Kurama asked. The blonde remained silent for a moment. He supposed his tenant did have a point. Had he just gotten lazy? Maybe so. However, he was going for the, loyal to Konoha, route in this world. It wasn't like there was anything specific in not doing so. It had just been the simplest approach, and if anyone knew him, then they knew he liked simple. Knowing this, Kurama grumbled and placed his head in his furry hands. So, what adventure are you going to do now that this world is done, Naruto? The Kayubi no Yoko asked Uzumaki Naruto, Nanadime of Konoha. Hmm, perhaps it should have been changed to, former Nanadime of Konoha. Yeah, that seemed to make more sense. The blonde quickly covered up the grave. A tedious work but he could at least respect those who died in this world by not leaving it dirty. Hmm, I dunno. I wish I had my list. Would be much easier to remember all of this shit. And no, I'm not going to, evil Naruto, root just yet. No matter how much fun you make it sound, Naruto was sure he heard a curse somewhere in there which made him laugh. He knew how badly Kurama wanted to try that out at least once. However, for that, the blonde would have to get into it. As fun as this was, he didn't see himself killing off his friends so easily and for fun. Perhaps on a bad day he could try it, but not right now. Kayubi arched an eyebrow. You could try the other one. You know, the special one, Kayubi said with a smirk. 
Naruto's eyebrow twitched, but he didn't immediately dismiss the idea. He knew which one the Kyubi was talking about. He had just finished covering up the grave and leaving no traces of his departure before he sat on the stairs. He placed a finger to his chin. Damn Kyubi, you're mean. You think they're ready for that? Naruto asked. Luckily for him, he was sure that neither he nor his fellow Biju never cared if they would be ready or not. With a final look over of his village, the blonde took a lasting breath of air. He then slapped his hands together. A massive surge of chakra blasted itself into the air. Not very subtle, but he doubted that it would matter at this point. Hey, give me a good show, brat. Oh wait, wait, wait. Kyubi shouted which made the blonde pause for a brief period. He lowly growled but held his stance. He could already feel the traces of his shinobi rushing towards this location. He shook his head in response. Dear Kami, what now? Naruto asked in a bit of a hurry. He could not have seen it, but the Kyubi gave the widest grin, showcasing his very intimidating teeth. He didn't say anything for a moment which only served to annoy the blonde more and more. He could tell that Kurama was doing this on purpose too. Seeing the time, the Kyubi smirked. Who's going to be your mate this time? No, wait, how about we go the, mates, route? You've never done that. If I recall, you said you would, but you never did. I wanna see it. We deserve it. Come on, the route we're going, we gotta have one. You owe me, Kayubi said which had Naruto rolling his eyes. He knew what his biju meant by that owing. Honestly, even at his age, Naruto was beginning to learn that the biju could be pretty damn petty when they wanted to be. If he wasn't concentrating, he would have rolled his eyes. Never would have expected the Kyubi no Yoko to care about such things. Though, maybe he would have been like that a couple of years ago. Naruto sighed. I'll think about it. Now then, before us both have some very uncomfortable explaining to do, how about I get us out of here? Ready for a new adventure, Kurama? Naruto asked. Kyubi almost scoffed. Did his Jinchuriki even have to ask? Kayubi had been waiting for this for the last 30 years since Naruto had finished this world's version of the Fourth Great Shinobi War. Truth be told, Kayubi wouldn't have minded Naruto becoming the mate of the rabbit goddess, but that would be for another world. Get going brat. Entertain me. Kayubi bellowed. Naruto grinned. Five small seals comprised of chakra coated his fingertips. He could see the Konoha Shinobi just over the horizon and he slammed on the ground. Consider yourself entertained, Kurama. Let's go on the next adventure. Naruto exclaimed. An immense circle surrounded his body, the lighting of its power flourished over the area. The Nanadaim Hokage and his biju found themselves enveloped in a sea of white. The shinobi who dropped to the ground couldn't have possibly seen who was inside the light, but they heard a shout. On Myoten. Ryoiki no Aiden, Yin Yang release. Transmigration of realms, the voice called before the light overpowered the entire area. Investigating shinobi closed their eyes at the intensity of the light. Naruto and Kayubi laughed as they faded away from the reality of the world before them. Once the light faded the shinobi would be left very confused and very concerned. However, in that cool night air, they would never be able to explain away the things they had seen while the next adventure to shake a new world would begin. X. The sunlight beamed through an open window. A gentle breeze flew through the curtains. This combination roused Naruto from his sleep. He opened his eyes and stretched his back. He pushed the covers off his body and dropped to his feet. He walked into the bathroom and checked himself in the mirror. Hey, it worked again, Naruto said, looking significantly younger than he had been previously. If he had to guess then he looked around maybe, six. 7. Who could tell? However, that did little to deter him. Naruto raced through some kicks, jabs, and punches. Naturally, his reach, strength, and grip had diminished themselves somewhat, but by lord did he feel good. His chakra coils remained the same, his knowledge of techniques remained the same, and he was sure he could perform them too. In other words, yeah, yeah, we get it. 
You're up as fuck. We all get it. Now, go out and become an overlord. Amass an army. Conquer these people. Lay waste to our enemies. Proclaim the power of Kayubi Sama. I want my own followers. I want a shrine to me also. I also want priests and priestesses too. Kayubi excitedly exclaimed. Naruto wrote all of these things down on his notepad. That said, he couldn't believe the words that were coming from his biju's mouth. Still, the young blonde would never deny the smile on his face at the prospects. Yeah yeah, oh great lord Kayubi. Come on, let's not waste any time then. I never thought I'd say this, but I'm so ready to go to the academy. Naruto said. He ran to his closet and opened the doors. He grabbed a small orange jacket. Not quite the usual of his ensemble, but it would do until he got some better clothes. Forgive him, but he was going to get that orange jacket again. Just a small piece of memorabilia for his empire wall. The thought was enough to make a grown man go giddy. He quickly grabbed his things and headed out the door. Naruto stared at his village. Funny. He had probably stared at this village over 30 times with each realm he decided to have some fun in. Yet, the sight of it could always make him smile. He jumped off the railing and dashed through the streets. To be honest, he didn't care about the hostile looks sent his way. Naruto could flatten the village if he really desired to. Not saying he would, but he could. I don't know why you bother running. You could have had us appear in style, Kayubi said a tad annoyed. This was not the grand entrance he had been hoping for. Luckily for him, Naruto knew this and expertly wagged his finger back and forth, all the while sucking his teeth as if to chastise his furry friend. Naruto smirked when he dodged one of the incoming people. Kayubi, Kayubi, don't you know the first thing about adventure? We can't get there right away. We have side quests to do. Our reputation in the village is abysmal right now. To get followers we first gotta get favor. Know the best place to get favors? Naruto asked. Kayubi raised an eyebrow, but he quickly understood where his jinchuriki was thinking and a cunning smile appeared on his face. Honestly, only Uzumaki Naruto could think of such ridiculous things, but that only served to make Kurama grin in amusement. Naruto walked into the hospital. The agents at the desk looked up at the door. However, they saw no one there. Tisk, stupid animals, the receptionist said before moving back to write some things on her notepad unaware that Naruto stood right in front of her. He waved at her, but he got absolutely no response. The grin on his face could have split his entire visage in half, but he did not dare laugh out for fear of breaking the technique. Of course, he could mind wipe everyone who saw, but that was just too much effort. He jumped up and down. He made some ridiculous faces at her before moving to the side. Do you have any idea what Jiraiya would do to have his hands on this technique? Kayubi asked. Naruto wanted to groan but held it in. Knowing that pervert, there would be no woman safe from his clutches. Granted, Naruto was kind of tempted to do the same thing to this woman in front of him, but he showed restraint. Work now. Fun later. The young Jinchuriki walked effortlessly through the halls. Medic Nin, regular shinobi, and patients alike had no idea he was among them. This reminded him of the time he went to a realm and was the only shinobi in his village to complete it 100% of his missions using only stealth. Eat your heart out stealth lovers. Though the attempts at creating this technique were quite disastrous at one point that he would not go over. That was bad. Very bad. In any case, Naruto left the more mild injuries for later. Right now, he needed desperation and things like that appeared in a very special part of the hospital, better known as the Ra, the resting area, the place for all patients awaiting their time to pass away along with their family, friends, and anyone else willing to come. Let it be known, Naruto wasn't going to become a savior of the people or perform that fake miraculous nonsense that cultist leaders tried to trick people into following them. That was ridiculous in every facet of imagination. Naruto was going to help people. While he loved having fun, he loved helping people in need as well. Which was why he hesitated going to the evil route, 
at the moment. It was such an antithesis to his ideals as a person. Boo hoo. Just go in and save people already. I'm dying of boredom here. Kayubi said. Tisk. No one appreciated a good dialogue anymore. Naruto entered the wing and dropped his invisibility. He could hear the weeping of some friends and family. Most likely this meant that he hadn't gotten to some of them in time. He walked through the area for a moment. He turned around a corner and managed to find what he was looking for. Does it hurt, son? A man asked. Naruto glanced at the door. He saw a male and female shinobi standing around their son. Not, too, much. I, had, fun, drawing yesterday. The nurses, helped, me, he gasped out. His mother planted kisses on the top of his head. His father held his hand as tight as he could. They both struggled not to collapse to pieces in front of their son. He had been born with a very rare and fatal chakra condition. Despite all of the family's tries and funds, the doctors had not been able to treat him. Only someone of Tsunade Senju's prowess could have worked such a miracle and no one had seen her in years. He was, slated to die in a couple of hours. He had been stuck in the hospital for nearly five years. They watched his eyes grow tired. Each time he closed them they wondered if he would ever open them again. Their breath stilled, but they sighed happily when they noticed him fall asleep. Just, a bit more time. They had just a bit more time. Come on, we should let him rest. We can return with some ice cream for him later, the husband said. His wife agreed, and he led her out. They couldn't even turn the door before they heard Naruto clear his throat. Yo, want me to heal your son for you? Naruto asked. The two shinobi parents stared at him in utter shock, whether from his words or his presence, he wasn't sure. Though, he could tell Kayubi rolled his eyes. Subtle brat. Very subtle, Kurama said. Naruto pointedly ignored his biju and continued to smile at the parents. Both seemed to come out of the state they were in and quickly snarled at him. Naruto wasn't phased by this. Actually, he had been expecting this reaction, sort of. The two glared down at him as if he were nothing more than a bug to be squashed beneath their heels. He merely continued to smile at them. The husband grabbed his wife's hand. Get out of here, boy. Someone like you doesn't belong here. Come on, Kairi. Let's go the man said. Both walked past Naruto without a second thought. The blonde released a tired sigh. The thing with having an abysmal reputation was that it if you didn't know what you were doing then that reputation was extremely difficult to come back from. Again, that was if someone didn't know what they were doing. Naruto kicked his feet. And here I thought you'd want to see him eat more and more ice cream. Oh well, I guess them's the breaks. Hope you'll at least invite me to the funeral knowing that every happy parent you pass by with their child in hand, you know you could have had the same thing if only you listened to me. Yeah, I'll just go, Naruto said, running past them. They both stopped. They were stunned when he ran around the corner out of their view. He suddenly stopped and leaned against the wall. Now, the waiting game. You're an asshole. I love it, Kayubi said. Naruto chuckled but kept his joy unnoticeable. Couldn't be making it too obvious now, could he? Thank you. Thank you. I'm here all day, good sir. Naruto remarked as he kept his eyes closed. Not even two minutes passed before he heard running. Kairi. Wait. You can't be serious. The man said, and Naruto saw the woman run around the corner. She saw him. Worry, fear, and hope were written across the length of her forehead. It was kind of cute, if not a bit, depressing. She gave him a glare, but she removed it almost as quickly as Naruto had seen it. Can, can you really do it? You're just a boy, what can you do that the best doctors in Konoha couldn't do? She asked. Naruto seemed rather amused at her questions. Of course, they weren't so outrageous that he could outright laugh at them. They were valid points. He would have almost smacked her upside the head if she had let him go through with it without question. The blonde leaned off the wall. He noticed Kairi's husband walk around the corner with a sharp snarl on his face. 
No doubt he was still angry to even be looking at Naruto, but hopefully, they would both be changing their tune soon. Well, even if they didn't Naruto still had other ways of achieving his objective. Naruto smiled when he turned the corner back to the room they had just left. It's not so hard. You can't trust Medic Nin nowadays to know right from left, never mind terminal illnesses. It's simple. I'm just going to erase the diseased parts of his body. That'll leave him right as rain, Naruto said, walking into the room. The two parents were right behind him. Naturally, they were anxious with the blonde being so close, but no doubt their love for their son's life was overshadowing their hate for the Kyubi. You, you're lying. You're going to cast some spell on him, aren't you? You can't possibly be doing this just for our benefit. What do you want? Our souls. I would expect nothing less from the queue. Kairi placed a hand over his mouth just in time to see him grimace. Naruto raised an eyebrow, but he could see them shaking at the possible repercussions. The blonde turned back to the boy in front of him. Rest assured, sir. I'm not the Kyubi. I mean, if I was, well I'm sure I could have reduced you all to ash at this time if I really wanted to, which I can't, Naruto paused. He most definitely could. However, he was going for Overlord this time. No point in letting it all go to waste at this point. However, it was obvious that the parents didn't believe him. Naruto shrugged. They would see the difference in time. Whatever. You must still want something. What do you want? He asked. Naruto raised an eyebrow and faced them. He raised three fingers. Three things. One, don't tell Hokage Gigi about this. I don't want him to find out yet. Do so and I'll reverse the treatment immediately. I'll have to expose him to regular doses of my chakra. I imagine in a month he'll be fine. Two, when I ask you for a favor, return it. No matter what it is. Three, the least you could both do is be pleasant with me. Naruto said which got them both by surprise. Naruto resisted the urge to scoff. Honestly, looking at all your glaring and snarling faces just ruins my day. Would it hurt to get some, good mornings, or whatever, I'm not saying we gotta be friends or something, but can I at least get a hello? Naruto asked. The husband was about to say something but Kairi stopped him. He glanced at her in surprise. Naruto watched her bow her head. I will go above and beyond that if you would please save my son, Naruto-san. My husband, Saiga, will as well. She said without hesitation. Her husband, Saiga, had never seen her so desperate. Admittedly, he was too. He loved his son and he would have given anything to have him healed, but, this just sounded too good to be true. Never mind that the boy was now aware of his status, but, he was asking them to feign ignorance to the leader of the village. This smelled of shiftiness. Yet, she looked at him with those big blue eyes of hers that he loved so much. He just couldn't handle it. Kairi, are you sure about this? Saiga asked. He watched his wife take his hands into her own. Not to be rude, but if Naruto had a watch he would have been looking at it real condescendingly right now. Kairi kissed Saiga's cheek. Please dear. I don't care what it might cause us, but I don't want to have to watch them bury our son before he's had a chance to live his life. We've tried everything and no one's been able to help us. Day in and day out, we've kept receiving pities and condolences. I don't want to hear those anymore. I want to spend more time with our son. She said fervently. Saiga growled, but he hung his head down. He couldn't disagree with these emotions at all. He turned back to Naruto and quickly nodded. Seeing this, the realm jumper placed his hand on the boy's head. He closed his eyes. His hands glowed a bright yellow light which filled the room. By the power of our god, Kayubi no Yoko. I cleanse your body of all ailment and imperfection. By this decree will you become strong and serve the village well. In you are born the flames of existence. Let them well, Naruto said. Saiga and Kairi couldn't even form words when they saw their son beginning to levitate. They actually wondered if they were even looking at the same blonde they had been regarding with scrutiny until they bore witness to four angelic wings sprout from his back. Naruto breathed a cool air over their son's body. 
If Kairi and Saiga were honest, they almost felt their knees drop in reverence. They watched their son take in a sharp breath of air, but this only lasted for a moment. His body then dropped without a sound. He had not awoken during this. Naruto rolled his shoulders. There. Done. Be sure to get him some water when he wakes up. He's going to be thirsty when he wakes up. Oh, and remember to come with him to see me one day a week for a month. It'll be better for him. I doubt the medic Nin will be able to explain this one. See you guys later. I gotta get to school, Naruto said with a wave. He left the dumbfounded parents alone and, with the same technique to get himself into the hospital, he made his way out. Was the whole, angel, thing really necessary? You cured him as soon as you touched him. What's with the whole, flamboyant appearance? Kayubi asked. Naruto shrugged his shoulders. He had never gotten to try such a thing before so why not do it now? Plus, humans always did tend to believe in something once they noticed it the first time. He was sure those two weren't going to forget what he had done for quite a while. Besides, those two were just the first of the one who would be joining his empire for this realm. X. Naruto decided not to waste any more time and teleported in front of the academy. He had long since sensed that no one was around so he could move without rousing suspicion. Naruto stepped into the academy and made his way towards his familiar classroom. He already knew he was late, but did he care? No, not really. He could run circles around these students, teachers, and even the Hokage if he wanted. He came up to his classroom door. A confident grin, he opened the door. Good morning, Vietnam. Naruto hollered at the top of his lungs shocking his classmates and his teacher when he walked into the room. Everyone turned to see his exuberant face. He waved to them all releasing kisses the sounds of a cheering crowd. He then climbed up on the teacher's desk. What do you think, Baruka sensei 8.5 out of 10. I think the delivery could use some work, but I bet I could work in some small fireworks. Nothing to burn down the building, but you get my drift. So, what's your rating? Naruto asked his teacher friend, and, in the last realm, big brother figure. Not to say that there weren't a couple of realms that surprised even Naruto when Aruka betrayed him those times he stole the sacred scroll, but those were very rare worlds and Naruto could never be hurt at them, mostly because he knew what his own original Aruka was like. Naruto. Aruka shouted and slammed his textbook downward preparing to strike the blonde in front of him. However, his book slammed the table ushering in a loud bang through the room. The Chunin teacher blinked in surprise before seeing Naruto at the edge of the desk very much amused at his teacher. You're late, Aruka hissed out, wrists on his hips. Naruto rubbed the back of his head. So I am. Thanks for noticing, sensei. Sorry about that, had to go meet a friend in the hospital. Besides, your lessons are kinda boring. Necessary. Yes, but still utterly, hopelessly, and agonizingly boring. I mean, Shish Sensei the least you could do is make it more exciting by having us act it out. Betcha even Kiba would pass this time, Naruto said. The class was silent as Naruto spoke on and on about Aruka's teaching style. They had never seen the man so angry before. He looked like he was about to explode in a sea of anger. It definitely made some of the students laugh. Admittedly, they all did it at some point, but to ignite the anger of Aruka was to ignite the flames of hell down upon a person. Not even Kiba was that dumb. Possibly. So, with that being said, can we all go home now? Since I've just debunked at least 50 lessons of yours, Naruto said, Aruka balled his fists enough to turn his skin pale. He raised his fist into the air and his target was the top of his disrespectful student's head. The veins on the top of his head pumped themselves in full force. Cut the stupid jokes. Aruka hollered and slammed down, but a surge of pain ran through his body. He clutched his hand in agony when he realized that he had left a dent in the table. The table minus one Naruto. Aruka glanced left and right and the only gasp of the females had the teacher watching the blonde cup Hanada's chin. 
He stared into her eyes much to the Hyuga heiress' embarrassment. Naruto couldn't help loving the way Hinata blushed. It was too easy to see her thoughts. Sheesh. He must have really been a numbskull when he didn't realize it at first. The signs were so obvious that one should have just beaten him with a stick to see it. It made Naruto almost groan when he thought about it. You know Hanada-chan, you're very cute. In another time, I think I might have fallen in love with you. I bet you'd be such a wildcat if we did have a future together. But, another lifetime I guess. Make no mistake, you're a very attractive girl, Naruto said and kissed her cheek. Needless to say, Hanada quickly fainted which made the Kayubi laugh out ringing Naruto's ears. Seeing that his work was done, leaving everyone surprised, he rolled off the desk and onto the floor. He quickly noticed Aruka's expression. So, the blonde decided to have some pity on his teacher. He walked down the steps until he was in front of Aruka. Naruto grabbed the chunin's hand and quickly healed it. Aruka breathed a sigh of utter relief. However, he quickly noticed exactly who was healing him. Naruto, you know medical ninjutsu? Aruka asked. Naruto shrugged his shoulders. Oh trust me, Aruka sensei. There is much I know that you'd be surprised at, but I guess I fooled around too much. I'll go take my seat, Naruto said, his hands resting on the back of his head. Aruka really wanted to say something, but he just sighed and allowed Naruto to join. It would be too much of a pain otherwise. Naruto could feel the stares on him. It wasn't anything out of the ordinary, well, not for him anyway. He half paid attention to the lesson in front of him. He had heard this thing at least a hundred times in a hundred ways. They were all really no different from each other. Perhaps he wasn't even aware of the lesson because before he noticed it, the bell had rung signifying the end of the class. He pushed himself up and watched the girls take away the fainted Hyuga. Honestly, if this Hanada had met one of the other Hanada counterparts from the other realms he went to then she wouldn't stand a single chance. Shaking his head, he pushed himself out of his seat. If he recalled then now was Taijutsu practice, chakra practice, and then shuriken jutsu practice. Now the Taijutsu, made the blonde smirk. He didn't see it, but he knew the Kayubi was smiling as well. Oh, this was going to be fun. This was going to be so fun. And, Naruto had just the idea to make it even more fun. The class waited outside. Various matches had finished, but no one had seen Naruto for a bit. Either he was getting reprimanded by Uruka, or he had ditched again. Both were plausible theories. However, they didn't stop them from speaking about what they had seen. Hey, Naruto sure told you, Kiba. Choji said which had the Inazuka air snarling. Akamaru gave Choji a growl of his own, but the big bone boy ignored the canine. Shikamaru leaned against the railing a tad confused. He had never seen Naruto act so, brazen before. Sure, the blonde was a tad, okay overly eccentric, but the complete disregard for any type of authority was odd even for the Nara air. Shut up, I hope I get him in my match. I'll mop the dirt with him. Kiba argued back. Choji just laughed and Shikamaru sighed tiredly. Why did he have to be friends with such energetic individuals? He'd rather be sleeping at this very moment. He wondered if he could just forfeit the match that he would go up against. This whole day seemed like a hassle. Oi, pay attention Jenin or you'll be disqualified when I call your name, Mizuki, another teacher, and friend of Aruka Yumino, spoke. The three genin quickly straightened up and the white-haired chunin glanced at the lists of students. He gave a silent smirk to himself. He wanted to make sure that no one saw it. However, he was not careful enough. Uzumaki Naruto and Uchiha Sasuke, your match begins. Mizuki called. Almost instantly the other boys of the group groaned. Che, of course, Sasuke's get the easy one. Lucky jerk were only some of the comments presented amongst the boys, but they quickly had to cover their ears in utter disgust when they heard the girls squeal. Sasuke snorted and made his way into the middle of the field. Woo, Sasuke-kun. Good luck. Beat that loser. The girls shouted in cheers, 
waving to the last of the Uchiha clan. Sasuke ignored them and waited for the blonde genin to get into the fighting stance with him. He had been slightly intrigued that the jokester of the class had moved in some surprising speeds. Naturally, the Uchiha would not have admitted this. As the girls cheered, everyone glanced around to see Naruto was nowhere to be seen. Mizuki snorted, Uzumaki Naruto, you're fighting Uchiha Sasuke, come to the center of the field. Mizuki called a bit louder to make sure he was heard by the entire group. He glanced around, but he couldn't find the blonde Jinchuriki either. Ino chuckled, I bet he ran away. I would too if I had to fight Sasuke-kun. That's probably the smartest thing he's done since, ever. Ino said. These thoughts were quickly explored by the rest of the student body. They all began to laugh aside from a couple of individuals. Yeah, Ino's right. Sasuke-kun's too cool to ever lose to that idiot. No doubt he's off sulking somewhere. Sakura Haruno, the former friend and current rival of Ino Yamanaka. This was met with more plausible cheers and squeals. If Sasuke were honest, they were getting a bit too high for him. He would like nothing more than to tell them all to shut their mouths. Seeing that Naruto wasn't coming, Mizuki was more than ready to call Sasuke the winner of the match and have the Uchiha face another target before massive screaming flooded the area easily drowning out the female classmates in the area. Kya, Naruto-kun, look this way. He's so cool. Naruto-kun, I made you lunch. Who's the loser who's going to fight you today? Kick their butt. The others heard. The girls of the class slowly quieted themselves in when they saw Naruto walk into the field. However, following him had to be at least 15 to 20 female kunoichi of equal or greater age by a year of the current female classroom. No one could hold their surprise when the blonde confidently walked into the field. Ladies. Ladies, please. There's enough of me to go around, Dadbeo. Naruto remarked. He paid no attention to the rest of his classmates. Choji dropped his bag of chips. Kiba's mouth dropped to the ground. Seriously, how dirty was that? Shikamaru leaned up off the railing, his mind failing to comprehend just what he was looking at. Hell, if Shikamaru was confused, then every other male and female of Naruto's student body was utterly floored aside from Shino Aburame. Not even Mizuki could keep the surprise off his face when he noticed the girls following the blonde. They watched Naruto chuckle when he took a girl's hand and quickly kissed it. The class watched her swoon before fainting. This had the rest of his crowd roaring for more. Is that Naruto? When did he get so popular? Ino asked. She couldn't believe the number of harlots suddenly following the dead last of the academy. Sakura couldn't even believe her eyes. The pink-haired academy student wanted to scrunch her face in disgust. Who would like Naruto? The very thought wanted to make her gag. He was just the dead last. Who would cheer for him? Suddenly, the girls who cheered for Sasuke felt rather, intimidated by the cheering of the crowd. Naruto was a couple of steps from entering the field. He turned back to his crowd. Now then ladies, I think I have to fight Uchiha Sasuke. Enjoy it to your heart's content. I'll make sure to win for all of you, Dadbeo. Naruto remarked. He opened his shirt and pulled out a white lily flower. He took a smell and sighed happily before throwing it to the ground. Kya, it's mine. I saw it first. Gimme gimme gimme. The girls shouted as they dashed at the symbol of Naruto's affection. Naruto shook his head before he turned back to his class. He enjoyed their stupefied looks. He shrugged his shoulders. I don't see why you don't like your fangirls, Sasuke. It doesn't take much to control them. You just gotta play on their tendencies, Naruto said. He blew an air kiss them. They sighed happily at him before moving off to the side. Couldn't have the coolest academy student in the history of the universe losing to distraction. They got themselves seated next to the academy class. Sasuke growled at Naruto and tapped his fingers impatiently. Are you quite done, Naruto-san? We need to get started, Mizuki said. Naruto rolled his shoulders. He glanced at the last Uchiha. Kayubi would have outright laughed at Sasuke's face if he wasn't already laughing at what Naruto had done prior. 
Yeah, I'm ready. Can we hurry this up? I have to return to my adoring public, Naruto said. Sasuke growled. He was not pleased. Everyone took notice of what Naruto was doing. The females of his class snarled before they turned to the cheering ladies of Naruto's group. Ah, uh, why would you cheer for someone like Naruto? He's going to get his butt kicked. Sasuke's going to destroy him. Ino challenged them. She nearly jumped out of her skin when she saw the murderous glares from his crowd. Dare she say she even took a step back from fear. One of the girls quickly turned her nose up at the Yamanaka air. Are you kidding? Anyone who can't beat someone with the head of a duck's ass shouldn't even be in this academy. I bet Naruto-kun ends your limp dick boy toy with one punch. We'll tell you what victory tastes like, she said. Ino, Sakura, and the rest of the girls stood slack-jawed. Naruto beat Sasuke-kun. You're all crazy. I can't wait to see you all cry. He's gonna be begging for mercy, Sakura said, but she shivered when a kunai sailed past her face nicking her pink hair. The kunai stabbed itself into a tree. She saw the utterly displeased face on another of the girls. You want to say that again, you b-t-i-c-h? She asked, but her fellow sisters quickly calmed her down. She sucked her teeth before she went back to cheering. Needless to say, but Sakura made sure not to go anywhere near those girls. Sasuke and Naruto stared at each other. Tell you what Sasuke. How about we make this interesting? Being the generous, lovable, kind-hearted soul that I am, I'll give you a free shot on me then I'll knock you out in one hit. Don't want to keep my ladies waiting, Naruto said. Sasuke stiffened. His class and Mizuki felt their jaws drop at the sheer audacity of the boy in front of them. Naruto, knock Sasuke out. That sounded like a dream. Hell, it sounded too far-fetched to even be a dream. However, they covered their ears in the face of his applauding crowd stating just how kind and generous he was to his enemies. Naruto waved at them. Sasuke balled his fists and gritted his teeth. This dead last dared mock him. Exclamation mark. Sasuke was the best. Begin, Mizuki said. Sasuke wasted utterly no time. He closed the distance between himself and Naruto almost instantly. Fine. A free victory was still a victory nonetheless. Sasuke brought his fist back and slammed Naruto in the face. He poured as much of his power into the blonde as he could. Everyone stilled for a moment. Sasuke smirk for a brief moment, but it gave way to a snarl when he saw Naruto smirk. Naruto brushed his cheek. Hum. Not even first blood. Couldn't tell if you were even giving me a face massage or not, Naruto said. The cheering of his crowd thundered in the field which had his class groaning. It was official, Naruto fangirls were hella worse than Sasuke fangirls. No one ever thought they would be saying that. Mizuki clenched the sides of his clipboard. Sasuke jumped back while Naruto shook his head. He then craned his neck. The Uchiha quickly took a stance. Don't bother Sasuke. That stance won't save you, Naruto said. Sasuke suddenly swallowed a gulp and a bead of sweat fell down his face. Where? Where did this sudden pressure come from? The class and the girls watched. One in suspense and the other in joy. You want to bet, Dobi? Then just try to hit me, Sasuke said when he charged at Naruto again. The smile on Naruto's face faded away. Sasuke quickly dashed to the side. The blonde realm jumper raised an eyebrow. So, this world Sasuke was just a tad smarter than the previous one. Interesting. Sasuke released a breath. Why? Why was he so tense? This was just the Dobi. He wasn't a threat. Yet, he felt like he would have been crushed if he continued. He released a growl which made Naruto roll his eyes. Okay, I don't have time for this. Sheesh, I almost preferred the old you, Naruto said before appeared in front of Sasuke with his foot raised. He slammed it down over Sasuke's head sending the Uchiha crashing into the ground cracking the earth beneath him and kicking up the dust around them. No one said a word. Once the dust settled, Mizuki dropped his notepad. Everyone stared at Naruto standing over Sasuke, the Uchiha passed out, 
small drips of blood escaping his lips. Naruto stared down at the Uchiha. He really hoped he didn't kill him. Reversing time would have been a pain. Oh, come on. It would have given this village character, Kayubi said. Naruto shrugged. Maybe, maybe not. He wasn't about to argue the ifs, ands, or buts regarding the situation. He picked up Sasuke by his shirt and grabbed him back to the group. I'm done, right? Someone look at this guy, Naruto said throwing Sasuke to Mizuki. He then walked back to his fan club. Everyone watched them shower the blonde with attention. The white-haired Chunin instructed someone to take Sasuke to the infirmary. Naruto grinned. Who knew school could be so fun? The rest of the school day ended with Naruto getting stared at this day more than any other day of his life. Some tried to ask him where this sudden change had been coming from, but Naruto only answered them with grin and half replies. He merely told them to figure it out. It wasn't until the day was over and that Naruto and his fangirls left the school. Once they were a ways off, Naruto gave them all a thumbs up. Nice one, Naruto said. The girls grinned before revealing themselves to be his clones. Damn that was fun. We gotta do that again. No kidding. The clones said before they popped from Naruto's vision. The blonde laughed to himself and took himself out of the bushes. He then stretched himself. So, what's the plan now? Kayubi asked. Naruto raised an eyebrow before he focused his senses on the negative emotions in the village. He smirked when he spotted Danzo and Root below the village. However, Naruto didn't feel the need to deal with him just yet. No, he would have his fun with that old coot later. For now, he needed to get his first pawn in his goal to become an overlord. He turned towards the academy infirmary. His eyes turned hungry. X. Saiga and Kairi watched the doctor drop his clipboard. I it's a miracle. It's gone. It's entirely gone. He's been healed. The doctor said. The two parents were utterly speechless. Hell, even their son couldn't form words in his mouth. They quickly grabbed their son in a tearful hug. Kairi kissed her son while Saiga ruffled his hair. Their son laughed in their arms. The doctor, on the other hand, looked over the notes one more time. I can't believe it. H. How is this possible? It was supposed to be fatal. He wasn't supposed to even see the moon fall tonight. This, this has to be an act of Kami, he said. The two parents stiffened for a moment, but they never stopped holding their son as if he would disappear from them right this moment. The doctor coughed for a moment. I, comma, I would like to study this for a bit longer, but if these charts continue to read right then he should be able to leave at the end of the week. Sir, ma'am, you have truly been blessed. I'll leave you alone to get yourselves together, he said before he left. Kairi and Saiga kissed their son. Neither said anything. They knew it was not Kami they had to thank for this. Both cried for their son in joy. He hugged both of his parents. This calls for a celebration. Where do you want to go at the end of the week, son? Saiga asked. The smile on his face must have been a godsend to the parents. However, they never forgot who was responsible for it. They also remembered the stipulations. Never would they have thought this, but, Kami bless Uzumaki Naruto. Kami, Kami bless the Kayubi. X. Sasuke opened his eyes and leaned up. His head was killing him. Upon looking into a mirror, he noticed the bandages wrapped around his head. Feeling rattled, Princess Satsuki. A voice asked. Sasuke turned his head to the window and he noticed Naruto smiling at him. The Uchiha quickly growled and all memory returned to him of what had happened. Could one even call that a fight? Sasuke had more been humiliated than anything else. What do you want? Come to gloat in my face. Well, don't get used to it. I let my guard down. You're still a dobi, Sasuke said. Naruto scrunched his nose. How cute, protecting his little insignificant pride. Still, Naruto casted those insults to the side. After all, he was the bigger man. He was also the stronger man and the sexier man. Harem says I, Kayubi said. Naruto rolled his eyes. He was still thinking about it, but it would be on the backburner for the moment. 
Right now, he had a little Uchiha to manipulate. Yeah, manipulate was a good word. If there was one thing the Realm Jumper had learned from the tons of realms he had visited with Sasuke in them, the Uchiha was far too unable to think for himself, male or female version. Naruto still remembered when he saw Sasuke as a girl. Very. Odd. Naruto leaned against the window sill. I can help you kill Itachi, Naruto said. Sasuke sat in silence. He turned to the blonde in utter anger. Of course, Naruto knew what he was doing. Itachi was always one of the trigger words for Sasuke no matter the realm. The blonde waved off the Uchiha's miserable attempt at forcing his killer instinct on him. Tech. Get out. Get out before I kill you, Dobi. You think my life is a joke? Sasuke asked. He was surprised when Naruto smacked him over the head. This gave a grunt of pain from the Uchiha. Don't be stupid, Sasuke. Salvage whatever meaningless pride you have for later. I know you. You would watch the entire world burn as long as it meant someone gave you the key to killing Itachi. Of course, I could just knock you out and still make you a part of my plans anyway. Want another concussion? I'm happy to oblige, Naruto said, cracking his knuckles for emphasis. Sasuke tried to make the Uzumaki burst in a sea of flames from his stare, but it only amused Naruto to no end. Tech, I must have punched you harder than you thought because you're crazy, Dobi. What would you know a beating an Uchiha? Let alone Itachi, Sasuke asked. Naruto turned his head to the side before he gave a quick smile. He then closed his eyes. Sasuke, Naruto said before he opened them. Sasuke quickly stiffened when he felt the weight of the blonde's eyes upon him. You have no idea of what I know and what I've done, Naruto answered. The grip on Sasuke's sheets tightened. He looked like he was ready to pounce on his academic classmate, but the pain in his body made him stop. He was much too injured to attempt to do that. Seeing this, the blonde Jinchuriki turned around and headed for the window. You see, Sasuke, I'm going to make this entire world mine. I'm going to rule over all of it. For that, I thought it'd be nice to include you in my adventures, Dadbeo. I'm going to change the world, Sasuke. I'm going to fight people you would never have thought. People who would make Itachi out to be a mere insignificance. If you join me, you'll be fighting those people too. You will be under my command as my first Grand General. You will be the Grand General of Overlord Uzumaki and the Whirlpool Empire. If you don't want to join me, well, that's fine. I don't specifically need you, but I figure killing two birds with one stone is much less of a hassle than doing it on my own, Dadbeo. I give you the power you want, you give me your undeniable and unwavering loyalty. Still, I would advise you not get in my way nor cross my path if you refuse me. On the same note, I'm sure you know not to tell anyone about this, not even the Hokage. I'll let you think on this. If you will join me, then meet me in training ground 7 at 1am 3 days from now. If you don't then don't let me see you at all that night. Saya Satsuki-chan, Naruto said and jumped out of the window. Sasuke couldn't speak. He looked down at his sheets. Thoughts and questions filled his mind and they would do so for those full three days. Meanwhile, Naruto smiled. You know full well the Uchiha's going to join you. What's with this whole ultimatum talk? Kurama said. Naruto snickered to himself. He continued to rush along the rooftops. Oh, come on Kurama. Where's the fun in knowing everything? We gotta spice this world up. In the last one, I was hated and became the Hokage. This time, I'm going to rule over the whole world before moving on to the next realm. Naruto said. Kayubi chuckled and closed his eyes. Besides, Kayubi opened one eye. I am unpredictable after all. Gotta keep it that way, Dadbeo. Naruto said as he raced towards his next objective. And I can't get over you. Bo. Bo. No matter what I tell myself, baby. Naruto sang as he walked across the open ocean. The night calmed him when he looked up at the stars in the sky. The smell of salt, sea, and adventure stung his nose. 
he could hear Kayubi bring the background noise to his song and he happily stepped over the wet surface. The Jinchuriki and his biju whistled the rest of music they had been singing to themselves. Not a care in the world was upon the realm warper. He kicked the water in his face and laughed as he did so. I think about the love we had for our children. He sang as he heard the sea rumble. Naruto smiled to himself as did Kayubi. The sea roared, and they could feel immense pressure upon them. Massive waves crashed over them, but Naruto held up his hand and moved the ginormous bodies of water out of his pathway. His chakra kept him from being swept away. The sea exploded upwards. Naruto took a step to the left and a giant tentacle pierced the ocean just inches away from him. Naruto smirked. I think about the way we laughed without reason, I think about us, girl, he sung before he jumped through the air and backflipped away from three more tentacles aiming to dismember him. He landed on the sea and perfectly balanced himself. He couldn't help licking his lips. He wondered if this sea beast would make a good addition to his empire. It wasn't like Kumogakur was going to need it. Besides, this guy was much better serving Naruto's purposes than becoming snake food. Maybe we should cut off one tentacle. Let him know you mean business. You gotta instill the fear in them early. They'll respect you later, Kurama said. Naruto tilted his head to the side. Hmm, he wasn't sure that was such a good idea. Was there a need to weaken his future kingdom's defenses like that? Admittedly, no one would have been able to defeat him anyway, but that didn't mean he wanted to see all of his glorious work attempting to get sieged on. However, this was also a game. There was no point in a game without some measure of risk. Kayubi grinned evilly. We can also make takoyaki out of his tails. Just one would last us for more than six months, Kayubi told the blonde. Naruto's hair shadowed his eyes. Sold. I love the way you think, Kurama, Naruto said. Kurama bowed his head. Honestly, sometimes even the all-powerful could be gullible when they wanted to be. Both swiftly focused their attention on the massive yellow eyes and black pupils staring at the seven-year-old realm jumper. Tentacles splashed around the ocean floor violently. Naruto rolled his shoulders. You don't remember me, do you? Guardian of the Island Turtle. Naruto asked staring at the large cephalopod glaring down at him. Naruto turned his attention back to the massive island turtle. He couldn't sense any Kumo shinobi there which was an unfortunate shame. He wouldn't have minded getting people to fear his name by roughing up a couple of Kumo nin. His young body might not be there physically, but he could have just knocked them out with his chakra alone. That's right, Naruto could knock down bitches before they even looked at him. The Jinchuriki took a step forward and tentacle swipe across the ocean was his response. The sea blasted into his face. Once it settled, Naruto appeared unperturbed by his wet hair. Ladies love a man in wet hair after all. However, the wet clothes were the inconvenience. Slowly, hot steam expelled from his body drying the water from his clothes. This only took a moment and the steam settled away. Cute. Naruto said. It didn't attack him just yet. This was also very interesting. It seemed to be giving him to option to turn away and run. In the last realm, this guardian was as temperamental as a storm at sea. It attacked anyone and anything that came within range of that giant turtle. Naruto still remembered when he and Kayubi had their mock battle that time. Such a time waster, but they had to appease the masses of course. Naruto had wanted to settle on cards, but Kayubi said it would be good to gauge where they stood. The blonde didn't mind. All right listen here, you reject movie monster. You can either submit to me quietly or I can turn one of your tentacles into takoyaki. I'm feeling very hungry right now, Naruto said. The guardian of the island turtle blinked. If it could laugh it would have been shaking the whole ocean. The little pea in front of it was almost hilarious. Just looking at it had to make him squint his massive eyes. Naruto raised an eyebrow. He could somehow feel the creature's amusement at his demand. Forgive Naruto if he was a tad annoyed. I mean, you can't really blame him. No matter how strong you are, you're a shorty. You're a shrimp. You're a tadpole. 
You're a little leaf in the forest. You're so short, he probably wonders if he's looking at a speck of sand on the beach, Kurama laughed which annoyed Naruto more. He balled his fists and he chuckled in a dark tone. The orange fox smirked. You were too easy, Naruto. You were way too easy sometimes. Naruto stared up at the ginormous squid and reached into his pocket. Hey, you think I'm kidding, eh? He asked and pulled out, a soda can. Naruto opened it, the snap of the cap in his ears. He turned around and took a drink. Um, that was the stuff. The creature was immensely confused by this. By the time I turn around, you better be assuming the position, or I'll make you regret it. Now, allow me to finish my soda, Naruto said taking another gulp. Damn, if only they made this brand in different tastes. Wait, Naruto was going to rule the world. He could force them to make it in different flavors. Oh, hell yeah, that was one for the list as well. He could hear the massive waves behind him. He just continued smiling. Naruto finished his soda and crushed it into powder. Couldn't go polluting his empire's oceans, now could he? He turned and, the squid still looked at him. Naruto paused. He tilted his head to the side. Kayubi, why isn't he assuming the position? I know I specifically told him to assume the position. Yet, I'm seeing a whole lot of not position assuming. Did I come to the wrong realm? The blonde asked. Kayubi snorted for a moment. Ask him, not me. He's the one looking at you like you're stupid. Well, stupider I should say. I think he's actually mocking you with that stare at this point. He probably thinks you're about to turn around and go home, Kayubi said. Naruto closed his eyes and took a big sigh. The seven-year-old raised a finger to the giant squid. He looked at the squid, still not assuming the position. Remember, you asked for this, Naruto said holding out the rest of his hand. A small blue orb quickly appeared. Its size could not have been bigger than a marble. Naruto rolled his arm back and threw it at the enormous cephalopod. The ball shined bright as it sailed through the air. The squid looked at the ball. Suddenly the marble exploded into a massive size easily overpowering the squid in its giant form. It crashed into the guardian of the island turtle with overwhelming force. The seas rocked beneath its power and spouts of water shot into the sky. The waves of water drowned the guardian under their weight. It screeched in pain as it fell to the floors below. Naruto yawned and scratched his head. Oh, come on. It wasn't that bad. It was on the lowest setting too. Why does no one take me seriously? I clearly warned him, Naruto said with a shrug of his shoulders. He looked down the depths. Honestly, could this thing be any more dramatic? It wasn't dead. Naruto wasn't about to make all of the effort to come out here without getting something to protect his waters. Come to think of it, maybe he could recruit a certain fish shinobi that had been a pain in the ass on more than one occasion. Naruto only had to wait about two minutes before the guardian sprung out of the seas. Its tentacles flared wildly at him in anger. The waves pushed and shoved. Had ships been along this sea then they would have met their demise long before they could figure out what the source of this storm was about. Naruto and the guardian squid stared each other down. He looks pissed, Kurama said. Naruto moved his mouth to the side. He's about to look like lunch soon. Naruto said when he jumped over a tentacle. He swayed his body through the air as strikes and swipes flung at his body. He moved his head to the side from one and slapped the other away. Naruto closed his eyes and gave in another yawn. Damn this child body. It could still get hella tired if it wanted to. He breathed tiredly into one of his hands while the other slapped the tentacles away. The seas did not ruffle him, and the guardian did not move him. One of its tentacles moved to restrain him. The blonde Jinchuriki moved to the side, watching the tentacle swipe the air. The giant cephalopod made a deep, rumbling noise. Naruto scratched his cheek when he saw the squid blast an immense volume of water at his location. Naruto's mouth thinned. The water blasted over his body and parted the open seas ushering in a wide explosion over the ocean. If squids could smile, then this one would have had a massive one on its face. 
that had been one of the most powerful water attacks in its arsenal. Truth be told, it wouldn't have resorted to that, especially for a child, but the blonde had forced his hand a bit. He couldn't let the island turtle get away from him for too long. The guardian watched the water settled and it must have been surprised because its tentacles chilled to a stop when he saw Naruto staring at it with a raised eyebrow. Despite the cascade of water, it had blown at the blonde, not a single piece of clothing or skin was wet. Naruto just seemed more annoyed than anything. He sighed. You know, I was trying to be a team player. I was trying to be the nice guy. And this is what I get. Naruto asked before placing up his finger. Neither Kayubi nor the Guardian could even express surprise before a tentacle went sailing through the air. Blood poured through the air. The squid backed away in pain when he saw one of its limbs floating in the sea. It's not gonna be one. I'm gonna take two. You hentai tentacled bastard. Naruto called out. The blonde grinned evilly and sunk his finger into the waters below. The squid screeched in pain as a surge of lightning exploded from the water and covered its body. The beast fell forward into the water. However, Naruto wouldn't let it end there. Seafood was best served grilled. He licked his lips. The things Kayubi had seen, shall dare not pass a demon's lips for the eternity of the nations. He almost felt sorry for the poor bastard. Ha, not. And I can't get over you. No matter what I tell myself, baby. I can't stop loving you, girl. No matter how hard I try. Yay, yay. And I can't get over you, babe. And I don't know why. Woo. Naruto sang as he pulled the guardian with five orange tails behind him, courtesy of Kayubi no Yoko, of course. Perhaps Naruto had a little too much fun with it, but he couldn't deny that the smell of grilled squid guardian was making him hungry. He was really looking forward to those squid balls when he got home. He skipped along the ocean. So where are you going to keep him? I don't your apartment is monster squid friendly, Kayubi said. Naruto waved off his friend's concerns. Well, concerns, was probably the wrong word. Maybe, curiosity was a better word. Yeah, they would go with that. He shrugged his shoulders. Well, I'll just set him up in the land of Eddie's before I need him. I won't be needing him for like five to six years, so he can just grow there. I'm sure there's enough for him to eat. It won't be hard to seal him around the islands. Good thing I'm the only one who can do it. You know anyone else who can seal off five to ten islands? Yeah, damn, I'm badass, Naruto said. Kayubi rolled his eyes, but he didn't correct his landlord. Kayubi raised an eyebrow. You're basing in Uzushiogakur. Isn't that a little boring? Even for you? Kurama asked. Naruto didn't rise to the obvious taunt and kept walking. Naruto wagged his finger back and forth. To be honest, this was just a tad irritating to the fox, but he would make a comment on this when it really got on his nerves. Which, judging by things, wouldn't be for very long. Hmm, no, admittedly. Creating an eternal empire from the land of my ancestors sounds cool and all, but I'm pretty sure we did the, rebuild Uzushiogakur, idea before in another realm. That's just going to be a temporary base of operations. I wanted Sasuke only because, even though he's hardly strong right now, he's still popular and so is his clan. That just makes it easier for the politics. We gotta have some politics otherwise this would be too easy. I dunno. It's an adventure. We'll think as we go along, Naruto spoke. Kurama didn't argue that point. Good to know that his Jinchuriki was taking an interest in those things, even if it took the Kayubi like two realms to teach the brat about the nature of politics. The blonde outstretched his hand. Quickly a portal opened up. All right, enjoy your new home you 1996 monster movie reject. Don't cause too much trouble for me, Dadbeo. Naruto shouted as the massive orange tails dragging his new guardian through it into the portal letting it settle into the waters of Uzushiogakur. Naruto quickly sent off three clones through the same portal. They would contain the bastard for later. Now then, what do I do with my prizes? Naruto asked, staring at the two enormous squid tentacles he had, pilfered from his new, friend. 
He tapped his chin in deep thought for a moment. It didn't take him long to snap his fingers. Aha, Naruto said and sped through some hand signs. Extending his hand, a blast of ice covered the two tendrils in seconds. The blonde Jinchuriki surveyed his work. He seemed very pleased with himself. He then dusted off his hands. Well, I think that was fairly productive. Now I can seal them up and they'll be perfectly preserved. I might not have to worry about takoyaki ever again. Never mind that this is a squid and not an octopus, but it has tentacles so it's fine. It's still a hentai fantasy. Naruto exclaimed. The Kayubi opened an eye. The fox rolled one his tails around. You know you should get some sleep. Op or not, you're still seven. Your body won't keep up with you. Kayubi said. Naruto quickly scrunched up his nose. Honestly, the first day of school in this realm had been enough. He wondered if he could have just left a clone there. K, it wasn't like there was any fear of it popping. Naruto doubted even Tsunade and the rakage combined to pop his clone at full strength. Still, that would give Naruto more time to think. Sasuke would be joining him. He was pretty damn sure that he would. Naruto would have liked at least four more Grand General. The army would expand itself from there. Now, he had to gain some recognition. Where, oh where, was the best place to do that? Kurama read through his Jinchuriki's thoughts and his grin was quickly followed by Naruto. Anyone seeing that grin on their faces would have shivered at the sight unable to move until the ends of time. Naruto opened another portal which showed his room. Time to have some fun. Oh, what joyous things could he come up with? He stepped into the portal. So many little piggies for the big bad fox to play with. Naruto would say wolf, but, Kurama would be giving him a headache if he did. Stupid foxes and wolves debate. X. Naruto grunted as he tried to perform some upside down sit-ups. He had decided to send a clone to school. Not like there was anything that could teach him that would surprise him anymore. Naruto had learned enough shinobi history to literally puke out the facts that would put the teachers to shame. It would have been hilarious to upstage them, but he had even more exciting things that belittling the teachers at the academy. He didn't feel the need to make Aruka's life too stressful. Now what he did want was to start setting some plans in motion. For that, he would be getting his second grand general. That would be two from Konoha and that would be the last of anyone from Konoha. So what are you waiting for? Go get her, Kurama said. Naruto grunted before he fell back and dropped to the ground. He grabbed a towel. Easy Kurama, we're having fun here, remember? Sides, I need my physical strength back. Just relying on the chakras boring. We already did the speed run route. Hey. Remember when I made Hokage in a year? Was a good time, but we sucked all the fun out of it too fast. I'm trying to make it last this time. I should be in school so I can't increase my reputation with the village right now. However, that doesn't mean we can't have some type of fun, Naruto said with a grin on his face. Kayubi didn't mind this. Jonan, Chunin, and Anbu raced to the middle of the village. The Sandame felt a bead of sweat fall down his face as the entire chakra was filled with malicious chakra. No, no, Naruto-kun, please, don't give in. Hirazan thought as they moved as they as they could. Civilians cried and screamed. Some pushed and pulled others out of the way. Naruto screamed in the middle of Konoha as he tore at his clothes. It's a lie, it's all a lie, Naruto screamed as he tore at his clothes. Kurama's chakra leaked through his body as his skin tore from his flesh. Almost instantly four tails blasted from his body. Naruto dropped to his knees. Hokage-sama, the seal is breaking. The Kayubi is going to be released. One of the Jonin exclaimed. Hirazan gasped as a wave of red chakra crashed into the buildings breaking them down. Naruto roared at the army of shinobi in front of him. The roar reverberated through the village alerting everyone to the horror appearing before them. Naruto-kun, calm down. You have to calm down. What's wrong? Speak to me. Hirazan pleaded, but he could see the immense pain on Naruto's face. The blonde, 
rather dramatically fell to his side. The young Jinchuriki felt another three tails appear behind the four bringing the total to seven. Naruto swung his arm and a blast of pure chakra destroyed the structures in front of him. The blonde was even sure he might have killed some people. Erm, um, oops, oh well, sometimes fun had its consequences. Hokage-sama, the other shinobi called. It wasn't Naruto at the moment. Of course, the Hokage would have a soft spot for the boy, but this was an extreme matter. Hiruzen bit his lower lip. He would have to beg Minato for forgiveness at a later date. He hesitated to raise his hand, but he ultimately did so. He could only pray that they could still help Naruto later. Shinobi of Konoha, engage the Kyubi. Hiruzen shouted. In the depths of his mindscape, Naruto tilted his head to the side. He supposed he shouldn't have been surprised by this, though he hadn't thought the Hokage would order the fight so quickly. He at least thought the man would try to reason with Naruto more. Admittedly, Naruto was going through with this anyway. He turned behind to see Kurama grinning. Having fun, Naruto asked. The large nine-tailed fox snorted. Like he had to answer a question like that. Naruto grinned for a moment before he turned back to the scene in front of him. He supposed he should have kept this up a tad bit longer. He rolled his shoulders. Naruto screamed as Kanai and Shuriken were stabbed into his body. Hiruzen held back the shame as he felt his heart crack into pieces when he saw the blood drip from Naruto's body. It's a lie. You lied to me Konoha. The cake is a lie. Naruto hollered as the ninth tail came forward. Naruto vanished in a burst of speed and tore through the shinobi around him. If you wondered where Minato was to stop his rampaging son, well, the man was on a temporary vacation. Courtesy of good, ol op Uzumaki Naruto ceiling. Hiruzen watched his shinobi drop to the ground as Naruto blasted through them all. The Kyubi was stronger than the Hokage ever remembered. It was like no one could stop it. Kaden. Gokaku no Jutsu, fire release. Grand fireball technique, at least a dozen shinobi called out. Their flames quickly synced themselves together and overcame the Kyubi Jinchuriki's form. Naruto covered his body his body in chakra. These flames were no hotter for warming ramen, never mind hurting him. The flames set ablaze the entire downtown area. Hokage-sama, what is the situation? Hiruzen turned around to see Kakashi, Asuma, and Kurenai dropping to the ground. He quickly gave them the rundown of the situation and the three Jonin were not pleased with these developments. Kakashi turned back to the flames. Could, could he even kill his sensei's son? Would he have to face his sensei with disappointment again? A deafening roar came over everyone which forced them to cover their ears. Naruto, the cloak of blood and chakra, covered his body. His pale, white eyes glared at the army in front of him. I told you, Konoha, I would get out. You think the kid and I are one? Ha, as if such a spineless child could hold my power. Now, for the lie you have committed, you shall burn. You lied about the cake. The Kyubi shouted as the seal on Naruto's chest broke into pieces. The intent to kill filled the area and it wasn't long before the skies darkened. People shivered as everyone stared into the murderous, gleaming, hating eyes of the Kyubi no Yoko. The Yondaimi's sacrifice for every man, woman, and child in the village, had been for nothing. Everyone stared at the intimidating form of the nine-tailed fox. Any, anyone got a spare Sharingan? Kakashi, do you think you can subdue the fox? Hiruzen asked. The one-eyed Jonin growled. He honestly didn't know. He had never tried to control a tailed beast before, or at all for that matter. The others looked at the Jonin with hope in their eyes. Kakashi wanted to hide away from the attention, but he turned back to the situation at hand. I can certainly try. It shouldn't be too complicated. It's just a giant ball of chakra, Kakashi said, though he most certainly didn't feel that way. However, that seemed to do amazing things for everyone's mood before they watched the Kyubi raise its arms into the air. And he shall smite the wicked. The lusters of flesh, the defilers, the traitors, the liars, the oath-breakers, the disgraced, 
You have been found wanting Konoha. By Kami's retribution, you shall be reduced to the ashes and fade away to the wind. Kayubi said as they watched a massive ball of chakra appear in its hands. Here is incursed. Buy the time for Kakashi. Stop the Kayubi. Drive it out of the village. Here is in shouted. A roar of courage came from the Konoha shinobi. Pretty soon, Kurama felt the explosions against his body, but they felt more like irritating flies than anything else. The Konoha shinobi stood before the biju. Kurama stood the face of their power. He noticed the familiar faces of Asuma and Kuranai in front of him. Yo Kit, why not the Genjutsu mistress? Look at that bod. Look at those eyes. I never said you couldn't have Konoha ladies. I'll admit, for someone as grand as me, they are much too insignificant, but for a fleshbag like you, I think they work out. I bet she's a freaking squealer. You know you have a thing for the squealers. Hanada was one of them, Kayubi said. Naruto tilted his head to the side. He gave Kuranai a look. True, she was hot. Naruto couldn't count the number of realms Kuranai ended up with Asuma in. It was almost ridiculous. How one-dimensional could one relationship get? Still, he could see a future with the Genjutsu mistress. He also didn't want to acknowledge the squealer comment. I'll think about it, Naruto said off to the side. Kayubi smirked before he turned back to the rest of the terrified villagers. Receive judgment mortals. And say, Kayubi roared. Everyone tensed and got ready to back Kakashi up in his attempt to control the Kayubi. Quote comma dot. Cheese. Kayubi shouted as a massive light appeared over everyone. Amidst the burning buildings and feeling people, Naruto smirked from on top of Kurama holding a camera. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you cuck your own shinobi village. The Konoha army couldn't hold their surprise when they saw Naruto laugh on the top of Kurama's head. Haha, ha. look at their fucking faces. This is the greatest prank of the year. That's one for the wall. Naruto cackled. Konoha watched the Kayubi give them a sadistic grin. However, before anyone could speak Naruto snapped his fingers. The flames surrounding the village paused. The shinobi paused. Everything, paused. Civilians running from the action stopped. Shinobi trying to put out the flames before they stopped. Not a single person moved. Ah, feels good to stretch the old legs. You do know that if we continue with this then no one in this village is going to trust you. Forget Kuranai, you won't even get Sasuke. I actually think we'll be executed, Kayubi said, a smirk on his face. Naruto snorted and rolled his eyes. Please. Like they could kill us. Heck, remember that time Danzo tried to extract you from me and found out that I didn't die? It would take a lot to kill us. Hey. We'll get to meet Shinigami-chan again. Do you think Shin will be a girl in this realm? Naruto asked. The Kayubi shivered at the thought. He never found out why the Shinigami never seemed to like him. Why him? What had he done? He didn't get it. Only you would make friends with the god of death, Kit. Sorry, but I'm not getting into that hellhole. Now then, can you just perform the technique, so these people can get some normalcy? Kayubi asked. Naruto tilted his head to the side and shrugged his shoulders. He hopped off his biju's head and landed on the ground. Naruto looked at the frozen people. You know, this wasn't all for fun. I did have a plan in mind for this. I just need to have a look at Konoha's force as a whole. I've never done that in depth before and now's as good a time as any. I can take this time to create a booklet of Konoha forces. I'm going to rule this realm, so I need an understanding of its forces. Remember that time that realm where each village had less than 50 shinobi? This one obviously has at least 50% more than my own original world did. So the armies are a lot bigger, but that makes it more fun, Naruto said creating an army of clones. Each grabbed a piece of paper and started taking notes of everyone. For himself, Naruto stared at Kuranai. He cupped her cheek and turned her up, down, and to the sides. Yeah, Kayubi wasn't wrong. The red-eyed woman was very pretty and very powerful in her own right. He wasn't ashamed to say the Genjutsu mistress, when he was much younger, 
was a source of fantasy for him. Why had he not considered charming her? Well, there was always a time for firsts. Oh, Lord Kayubi, guide your willing servant's hands and mind. Say I do the harem route you have commandeth of me. Who, am I to woo? Pick for me my brides to be. Naruto claimed. Kayubi stared at his landlord for a moment, however, he did not feel bad about this. So, Naruto was willing to go along with it. This would prove to be a very good situation in the future. Besides, the blonde was already working for the fox's temples, priests, and priestesses. He supposed he could be fair as well. Kayubi raised his head into the air. My faithful servant, I have heard your pleas and your cries. I shall deign you mates worthy of your ability and your right as a future emperor. I challenge you. Claim the one before you as a mate. So by the eternal decree of the god of destruction, Kayubi-sama. Kayubi roared. Naruto turned back to Kurenai. Once all of the clones collected notes for him to collect, he slammed his hands together forcing chakra through her body. As you decree, my lord. Watch over me. Naruto called to him. The biju and the jinchuriki then roared with laughter as Naruto spoke. Kinjutsu no Anmyoten. Jiken no Uranai, forbidden technique of yin-yang release. Divination and mitigation of time, Naruto said. Quickly, everything around him began to reverse itself. The Kayubi found himself sealed back into Naruto. Buildings were reconstructed, civilians came back to their original positions. The flames settled down and peace returned to Konoha. Naruto chuckled tiredly as he dropped his hands. People walked in the streets none the wiser of what happened. Okay, note to us. That technique is still very tiring. Use it sparingly, Naruto said. Kayubi agreed. Still, the blonde found some stability in his body and quickly walked out of the streets. Now then, with fun out of the way, for now, it was now time, for more fun. X. Unkai stared down at his niece in shame. He watched her pant as she finished her set of 20 push-ups before throwing herself into a coughing fit. He shook his head. Yukumo, you have to try harder. You must overcome your limits. You will not become a capable heiress worthy of leading the clan if you cannot stand in the face of adversity. Work harder, he exclaimed. The girl, Yukumo, tried to push herself up, but her body would not allow her to do so. She dropped and Unkai snorted before walking away. You're not to move from that spot until you perform at least a hundred push-ups. I will have one of the members come and collect you. If you cannot perform this, then you will be given no dinner. Unkai said before leaving his niece, heiress to the Kurama clan, on the cold, hard ground. She could hear his steps dissolve into nothingness. She tried to perform more of her push-ups, but every set made it feel like her body would collapse over her. She tried hard, but it wasn't long before she felt the burning in her lungs which had her on the ground heaving. Yukumo tried not to cry. No one understood. She was trying. She was trying as hard as she could. She wanted to impress everyone, but it was as if the entire world was against her. She was born with a weak body. She couldn't even go to school like the others because too much stress would cause her visage to collapse. She wanted to be strong. She swore it every time she went to bed that she would become someone that everyone could find immense strength in. When people saw her, then they saw a strong woman capable of achieving remarkable things despite what her uncle told her. She wanted to be great. She wasn't weak. She could be strong too. If only, someone gave her some help. If only someone understood. If only, someone cared about her. Yo. Bad day. A voice asked. She looked up in surprise when she saw the village pariah, Uzumaki Naruto, swinging his legs while smiling at her. She had remembered seeing him once or twice. Her parents adamantly told her not to associate with the blonde. It was something along the lines of him corrupting her, but she never knew why. She just knew he was an orphan and, apparently, he had done some bad things in the village. Yukumo slowly got to her feet and started moving away from him to go and find her parents. She didn't want to be alone with him. However, to his credit, Naruto wasn't perturbed by this. 
Why should he be? He had dealt with this treatment at least over 300 realms ago. This one was no different. He yawned and called out to her. You know. He's right. You would suck as an heiress especially with how rude you are. Not even bothering to respond to someone talking to you. I know I wouldn't want to follow you, Naruto said. His eyes gleamed when he watched her slow to a pause. Honestly, live a couple of lives and you could find that humans could lose all sense of complicatedness and devolve into simple thinking. Now, was Naruto taking advantage of a little girl's insecurities? Yes, he was. Was he going to manipulate said insecurities for his own goals? Yup yup. Was he an absolute asshole? Another yup to the lucky winner. Did he care? Just a tad. Was it still funny? Hell yes. Was he going to stop? Erm, allow him to get back to you on that. He watched her turn around and look at him. I, apologize for ignoring you, but don't insult me when you have no idea of my situation. Now if you'll excuse me, my parents told me not to associate with troublemakers, Yukumo said before she started moving again. Troublemakers, eh, and please, what trouble have you seen me commit? What crime has this pretty, damn good looking face done? Please, tell me. You obviously have seen me do something wrong, right? I mean, why else would you insult me to my face? So, know it all San, why don't you enlighten me on my shortcomings? Naruto asked. Oh, rest assured that Naruto was aware of how much BS was coming out of his mouth. He was Naruto fucking Uzumaki. He was made for trouble, but, trouble was fun if you knew how to manage it. Yukumo said nothing. She tried to think of times that she had seen the blonde doing anything, but she found nothing. She had been in her compound most of her life so that might work as an excuse, but, she knew it only solidified his point. She seemed a tad embarrassed. I've never seen you do anything. I've only heard things about what you've done from the villagers and my parents, Yukumo said. Naruto swung his legs on the branch he was sitting on. His body swung until he fell upside down allowing his legs to hang off the arm of the tree. And what have they said I've done? I mean, they would tell you the specifics, right? I mean people love to point out flaws. So, what has been told about me? I mean it's not like I wouldn't know. So, tell me, what have they said about me? Naruto asked, that smirk still on his face. Yukumo glanced off to the side. She had heard the murmurs from the crowd, but no one had ever explained to her what he had done wrong. It wasn't like her parents to lie to her for no reason. He, had to have done something, but, she had absolutely no evidence. Naruto snorted. You can't even think of anything, can you? Well, I guess you're the type of person to just believe what other people say without even thinking it on your own. And here I thought clan heirs were supposed to be wise. I guess they'll make anyone a clan heir these days, Naruto said with a shrug of his shoulders. Yukumo stiffened. The young girl pouted. The blonde found the look adorable. If you want my opinion on what you are, then right now I would say you're a big jerk. Yukumo said, puffing her cheeks at him. He snickered. She had no idea how right she was in that regard, but he wouldn't tell her this. He merely walked over to her with his arms around his head. She didn't turn away from him, something he was surprised by. So, this Yukumo was just a bit more confident than his own. That would do wonders for him. Whoa, so you can think for yourself. Good to see. Maybe we can do something worthwhile with you, Naruto said. The brown-haired girl's face slipped up. Huh, was the most intelligible thing that came out of her mouth. She watched Naruto pat her on the arm. He was, unusually close. Simple. I'm going to make you strong, Yukumo-chan. I'm gonna make you so strong that your old geezer of an uncle will be stupefied by you, Naruto said. The heiress of the Kurama clan didn't know how to reply to his words. She only saw him grin. She couldn't even reply to him before she watched him walk off. Come to training ground 7 at 1 a.m. two days from now. You're going to be someone great, Kurama Yukumo-chan, Naruto waved off to her. She blinked when she watched him run out of her compound. 
It had never even occurred to her to ask him how he had even gotten into her compound. Her mind then brought her to more attention. Yukumo called out to him. I'm not allowed out of the how after seven. She called to him. However, Naruto just kept running. He turned back to her. He wagged his finger at her. Kayubi snarled. He really had to get his jinchuriki to stop that shit. It was really annoying. He was sure that Naruto knew it too. He turned back to her. If you wanna be strong then you can't rely on your parents to guide you all the time. Naruto told her, and he vanished out of her view. Yukumo watched the spot where the blonde pariah just was. One other question she had to ask. Why? Did none of the guards see him? Meanwhile, Naruto left her compound a happy man. You do realize you could have done all of this without placing a genjutsu over the whole compound. You're being rather lenient with these people, Kayubi added, half asleep half awake. Naruto scratched one of his ears. Nah, it'll be fine. Outdoing one of Konoha's most premier clans in genjutsu is always worthwhile. Now I have two genjutsu masters from two powerful clans in Konoha as my generals. Now, we can start putting other things in motion, Naruto said as he continued on his way. X. Sasuke opened his eyes when he felt his alarm go off. He had gone to bed early. He noticed the moon in the sky. He turned the clock off and glanced at it. It read half an hour to one in the morning. Sasuke rolled out of his bed and brushed his hair for a moment. As he got dressed, Sasuke kept telling himself how crazy he was. It was the dead last of the academy that was telling him he was going to rule the world with the Uchiha as his first grand general. Sasuke never cared about what happened to him as long as he made Itachi pay for his treachery, but to hear of the blonde's goals was not something the Uchiha could associate with him. Sasuke had spent all three days thinking on this matter. He had not told the Hokage nor anyone about what Naruto had told him. He stood up and placed on his shoes. The raven-haired heir to the Uchiha clan wanted to argue what he had seen, but he couldn't do so. He could tell that Naruto was strong. As much as it angered him, he had to admit that he had been humiliated by Naruto when he was taken out with one kick. He also had to admit that, he trembled when he stood before the blonde. The dead last, had made him feel fear. There was an uncontrollable aura that made the young Uchiha shiver. Sasuke never wanted to admit it, but Naruto was strong, ridiculously strong, incomparably strong. And the most frustrating part of that was because Sasuke had no idea why. If, if Sasuke could become that strong, then, there was nothing to stop him from killing Itachi and avenging his clan. He wasn't strong enough. He could tell he wasn't strong enough. Even, even if it was the dead last. Sasuke had to find out. Any measure of power to make him stronger he had to take. Sasuke opened the door to his apartment and walked out. The night air was cold, and it took the Uchiha some time to find the training grounds, especially without getting caught by the night patrol. Sasuke climbed over the gate and entered training ground 7. Sasuke saw the trees rustle in the cool wind. However, beyond them, there was no other sound to be heard. The Uchiha took notice of three log posts and stood next to them. It couldn't have been more than five minutes did Sasuke hear the pattering of steps. He turned his head and he was rather surprised to see the heiress to the Kurama clan. She seemed surprised to see him as well. The two clan heirs stood next to the log posts. Sasuke-san, what are you doing here? Oh, actually, that's probably a stupid question. If you're here at the same time I am, then I guess Naruto-san told you to come. She asked. Sasuke offered a grunt for a response which Yukumo didn't appreciate but she decided not to argue. She took a position next to the posts as well. It had taken the heiress to the Kurama clan a considerable amount of time to try and sneak out of her family's compound. Never mind that the night was rather scary at this time and each step made her want to turn around and hide in her bed, but she wanted to get stronger. She didn't want to hear her uncle's harsh words anymore. She knew she had great skills other than physical prowess. There had to be things that even she could do better than anyone else. 
About 10 minutes of silence passed for the two as they waited for their apparent host to arrive. Yukumo glanced up and stiffened. S. Sasuke san, it might just be me, but the moon isn't supposed to be red, is it? Yukumo asked. Sasuke growled for a moment, but he stared up at the moon. No, the moon was definitely not supposed to be red. The two young ones stared at the moon for a moment before they heard someone shout. Oi, what are you two doing out here? This is restricted territory. Sasuke and Yukumo couldn't even hide their surprise when a flashlight beamed into their faces. Both covered their eyes when they saw a Jonin standing over them, a stern expression on his face. Sasuke sucked his teeth. Stupid Dobi. What was taking him so long? Now they were in a heap of trouble. Yukumo seemed to be a fish out of water when the Jonin moved up to them. Neither wanted to speak as the Jonin chewed them out telling them how stupid it was for the heirs of two prominent clans in Konoha to be alone, at night. He had a disgusted look on his face. I don't care what you to do, but if you're going to meet each other out here, at least do it when you're older and at home. Trust me, the bed is much more comfortable than the woods, he said. Yukumo blushed and stared at the floor while Sasuke just seemed more annoyed than anything. The Jonin sighed. All right, you brats, let's go. I won't tell your parents just this once. If I see you here again, I'll make sure you're both kicked out of the academy, he said before herding them out. Sasuke and Yukumo fell into step with him. The brown-haired girl looked at the raven-haired boy. He looked like he wanted to burn the entire forest to ashes. She couldn't blame him. She was upset as well. Of course, why would she trust someone her parents told her to stay away from? Hopefully, they would both learn to never listen to Uzumaki Naruto's words ever again. As the three walked through the training ground, the Jonin stopped. Don't move. Did you hear that? He asked. Yukumo quickly shivered when she heard that. The Jonin flashed the light into the streets. Neither Sasuke nor Yukumo heard anything, but the older man narrowed his eyes. He growled. Both you, do, not, move. I'll be right back, he said, and he dashed into the trees. Sasuke stuffed his hands into his pockets. He glanced at the female next to him and noticed she was just a bit closer to him than he would have liked. He snorted. Ah, Yukumo and Sasuke jerked up and the former fell to her feet when they heard a blood-curdling scream. From the depth of the tone, it had been the Jonin they were just walking with. Yukumo quickly grabbed Sasuke's shoulders. The Uchiha growled and reached for a kunai. Everything was still. The two start off into the direction they had heard the scream. They had to get out of here, but, it was too dangerous to move. They saw blood drip off the streets. A chorus of groans and moans filled the night air. The red moon stared at them both. S.S. Sasuke-san, Yukumo said, but the Uchiha quickly silenced her. Both watched the trees shift around them. Then, the bushes shifted. Sasuke's body chilled and Yukumo tried not to scream when they saw the Jonin's head roll to them. However, it didn't stop there when they saw a decaying footstep out. A moan attached to that foot drew them to the hollow eyes glaring at them. Its undead skin walked towards them. However, that was not the only one. Soon there were two, then four, then ten, then twenty, walking out of the forest. Sasuke and Yukumo stood stunned as they watched an army of undead fallen shinobi walk over to them. Sasuke took a step back. Yukumo followed him. She turned around to cover their back but she couldn't hold her scream. Sasuke turned around and unsurmountable horror filled his body when he found them surrounded by hundreds of undead. Sasuke glanced around, but he saw absolutely no avenue of escape. He turned to Yukumo and grabbed her arm. I'll distract them. Hurry up and get help. Don't stop running, you hear me. Get out of here. Sasuke hollered and tossed her as far as he could. Yukumo cried as she flew through the air and slid on the ground. Sasuke-san. Yukumo called. Some of the undead noticed her. Yukumo tightly closed her eyes and quickly ran off. They followed her. Meanwhile, Sasuke stared down the remaining enemies. He quickly sped through some hand signs. 
I don't know what's going on, but I'm not going to die here. Not until I kill Itachi. Sasuke uttered. Kaden. Gokaku no Jutsu, fire release. Great fireball technique, Sasuke shouted and he blew a massive fire over the army of decaying bodies in front of him. The flames overwhelmed them and crashed into the forest behind them. Sasuke seemed pleased with himself, but amidst the flames, he saw them still walking unperturbed by his technique. Sasuke forced more chakra into the jutsu as he could, but they calmly walked through it and grabbed his arms. Their grip was strong. Sasuke growled, but he couldn't budge. His body was not conditioned enough as a young boy to withstand the might before him. He saw them stand over him. The strength and fear overwhelmed him. He closed his eyes. Oi sleeping beauty. I'm not kissing you to wake you up. I don't roll that way. You too. Sleeping beauty number two. If you both don't wake up, I'm gonna take a picture of you and spread it around Konoha. Imagine, the Uchiha and the Kurama clan, getting started on their future heirs early. Ooh, what a scandal. Sasuke grumbled and opened his eyes. He shot up in surprise to see nothing around him. He saw Naruto standing over him. There were no enemies. There was no decapitated Jonin. In fact, the only Jonin was the one sleeping next to them. He turned, and he noticed Yakumo leaning up as well. They stared at Naruto. Enjoy your dream, Naruto asked. Both saw his smirk. He, he had done it. Sasuke growled and shot up. He grabbed Naruto's collar. You did that, Sasuke asked. Naruto rolled his eyes and plucked Sasuke in the head blasting him into the ground. If Yukumo wasn't so shaken she would have been more surprised at Naruto flicking Sasuke off his person like the Uchiha was but a bug. Meanwhile, the blonde patted down his clothes. Sasuke coughed and leaned up. Naruto shook his head. Now then, that you know not to touch me like that, I'll let you know. You're damn right I did that. I did it for three reasons, Naruto said holding up three fingers. They stared at him. Kami forbid if these were not valid reasons. They tried to look angry at him, but he hardly cared about their pitiful little temper tantrums. He'd give them each a subscription to the Shinobi Child Care Facility, best diaper company in the world if they insisted. 1. It was because I could. You're going to be two of my four grand generals. I'm going to fuck with you. A lot. Why? Because I'm fucking Naruto Uzumaki and you're all my bitches. Naruto said. Sasuke seethed and Yakumo frowned, but Naruto continued on as if they didn't even exist. Hmm. Ah. Second, it was pretty damn funny to watch you two squirm. Now, three, was to begin your training. And, judging by your performance from that, we have so much work to do if you're both going to be competent generals, Naruto said. That made their anger diminish somewhat. They looked at him rather confused at his words. The blonde saw this and smacked his forehead with his hand. Ah, uh, you, John and San. Get your lazy ass up, Naruto said. The three watched the John and lean up. His eyes seemed very unfocused and he stood to his feet. The Kayubi Jinchuriki held out his hand. Sasuke and Yukumo were aware of his smile. You will go home, and you will confront your wife's cheating. No, you'll do better than that. Go into the red light district. Snag yourself a nice girl, what little of them there are, and take her back home. That's right, you're going to Nedori your wife. Make sure she sees it too. Then, just before you finish, face her and say, the aristocrats. Naruto said. He then pushed the janin away. The man walked off without another word. Sasuke and Yukumo watched him leave. Confusion could not have been more evident on their faces. Oh yeah. Be sure to videotape it. Send it to my house. I gotta store it in my, things to bribe people with, scroll. Naruto shouted out until the man was out of view. He seemed very proud of himself and firmly nodded his head. Ah, Netori. Good. OL protagonist perspective. Seeing that his work with that loser was over, Naruto turned back to his two underage generals. Now then, about what I just witnessed. 
why in Kami's gloriously tight ass couldn't two heirs of two famous genjutsu-related clans not break out of my weakest genjutsu? Naruto asked. Yakumo seemed a tad embarrassed while Sasuke grunted and stared off to the side. Don't tell me you two really believe in the undead, Naruto said. Their eyes focused on other things which made the blonde want to smack himself. He stared at them and he wondered if it was possible to remove the brains of these two and substitute them for garbage cans. That would have been a vast improvement to what he remembered. He actually wondered if Sasuke would have fallen for this in any of the other realms he had been to. Hey, don't give him such a hard time. There is the Edo Tensai and there was also that other technique by that hot redhead's leader, Erm, shit, what was her name? The girl obsessed with her hair, Kayubi said. Naruto tilted his head to the side. He wondered if he could get his head to touch the ground this way. Gonna need to be a bit more specific old buddy, old pal, old friend. I've met too many girls like that. We both have, Naruto thought. Kayubi couldn't even try and argue that point. The nine-tailed fox scratched the back of his head. You know, the girl back during the original realm. She was your first non-Sasuke kiss. Only took you like kissing the idiot two times before getting to her. That chick. She could steal chakra natures. She was the first one you ever got tongue action from. Kayubi said. Naruto stiffened and grinned. Oh. Fuka-chan. Now I remember. Ah. I wonder where she is now. Probably Frenching someone else. Sigh. I miss her. Naruto thought. Odd. He had never looked into Fuka before. However, he knew that Kayubi caught this. The fox smirked. I'm smelling harem member number two. He boasted. Naruto wanted to roll his eyes, but his mind just couldn't find a reason to turn the suggestion down. Damn you, male hormones. No wonder females were scared of you. Then again, perhaps the inverse is true as well. One could hope and pray for that type of thing. Sasuke and Yakumo watched Naruto stiffen. Oh come on, since when did you have a thing for soul-sucking women? Naruto asked. Kurama stretched his body. Since I remembered what happened to you when she kissed you, tried to kill you, or was Naruto Jr. having an interesting day before then? Kurama asked. Naruto stood still. The cold air blew on his face. Sasuke and Yakumo stared at him. They were starting to wonder if he had just been deciding on what to tell them. Little did they know that Naruto had just died. Yes, Uzumaki Naruto, op among ops, conqueror of the world, just died from a local aneurysm. Oh well, better luck next time. No protagonist, no story, no harem. Farewell. Hey, you can't die you idiot. I still need my temple. Get your ass back here. Kayubi said and pumped chakra into the blonde's brain. Naruto's eyes moved. He was alive. He was back amongst the living. Fucking damn it. You asshat. Sack of shit eating piece of death cock drinking. Mouth to ass. Chakra empowered. 10,000 foot tall yif looking Rakuto senin bastard child of OVERSEXING fucks. Naruto panted as he placed his hands on his knees and hunched over. He turned to see Sasuke and Yukumo still looking at him, even more confused than before. Naruto closed his eyes while he heard his tenant's uproarious laughter. He then faced the two of them. I'm going to ignore this. You're going to ignore this. If you ever bring this up again I will mind fuck you both so badly you won't even remember a xenomorph from a yautja. Naruto exploded. A what a what? Kayubi? Sasuke, and Yukumo thought at the same time. For that matter, none of them, not even Kayubi, were sure what either of those things were, but the latter two slowly nodded anyway. Seeing this, Naruto took deep breath and backed up. Sorry, I just lost a lot of my composure at the moment. Let's just back up for a second here. Yukumo, the reason I called you and Sasuke here is because I am going to conquer the world. I'm going to rule every single last inch of it. No one's going to eat a single piece of food without me knowing it, metaphorically speaking. Now, I'm going to train you and Sasuke to be my grand generals. You're both going to help me rule the world and in return, I will give you both what you want, Naruto said. 
Yukumo blinked. He found her questioning gaze amusing. Sasuke wants revenge for his clan. I can give that to him easily. You. You want to bring great honor to your clan and help them see that you can be a competent clan head. It's not so impossible to rely only on Genjutsu. Though, I could fix that weak body of yours too, Naruto said, waving off whatever problems she had. Yukumo seemed to take some time to process these words. He, could fix her body. He was going to be ruler of the world. He was freaking crazy. You're crazy, she remarked. Naruto raised an eyebrow at her. He then rotated his shoulders. And that, is lesson number one learned, little lady, Naruto replied to her. She continued to stare at him. She wondered if it was too late to leave. Unfortunately for her, it definitely was. She turned to Sasuke, but she could see the Uchiha clinging to his every word. He couldn't be serious. She didn't want to rule the world. She just wanted to make her family proud. She didn't want to rule over people. But, I don't want. She jumped when Naruto plucked her in the head. Oh, you want it. You just don't want to want it. Ah, uh, no one can ever be honest. Here, let me tell you what your future is going to be like if you refuse me. I'm going to mind wipe this conversation from your head, you'll return home, you'll continue to be berated by your uncle, you won't join the Shinobi Academy, your parents will try to assign a smoking hot genjutsu teacher to try to help you. News flash, she can't, you panic, you question your ability to lead your clan, your ID takes over and kills your parents, you then have to be put down because you're a threat. That sound like something you want? Naruto asked. Despite the smile on his face, Yukumo shivered at the thought of these things. She never wanted anything to happen to her parents. I comma I don't have an ID, she said. Naruto snorted. Yeah, sure, whatever. I'll deal with that thing too when the time is right. So bid your time you creepy, thing. Naruto hollered. Yukumo didn't know why she felt anger for a moment, but it quickly vanished. Naruto cleared his throat. The blonde walked out into the forest and turned to them. I'll give you the same words I gave Sasuke. If you don't want to join me, that's fine. However, don't stand in my way or I'll cut you and the rest of your family down. Nothing is going to stop me, most definitely not Konoha, Naruto said. Yukumo slowly found her strength despite the assumed threat. She stood up. Why me? There have to be more capable people than me, Yukumo said. He rose an eyebrow. So, this realm's Yukumo was also the inquisitive type. He would have to store that information away for future purposes. However, he wasn't going to feel bad at bursting her bubble. He smiled. Well, you're right about that. I could actually get people better than the two of you, infinitely so currently, Naruto admitted. Though, that was perhaps half true. Getting people like that would require a more delicate approach and this wasn't about delicate. It was about fun. He watched Sasuke's eyes harden and Yukumo seemed like she had just caught him in a loop. So then you don't need me. I can't be a part of this, she said. However, before she could even move, Naruto kicked her feet from under her and sent her to the ground. She groaned and clutched her head in pain. What was that for? She asked angrily, but she saw his eyes peering down at her. Obviously I could have better than you and Sasuke right now, but I won't have better than the two of you later. Do you really think that I will allow people who can't be the very strongest to be serving under me? Yes, I am aware of that paradox. Now, shut up, we're seven, but I know how strong I am and I know how strong I can make the both of you, provided you both give me your everything, Naruto said and picked her up. Sasuke stomped his foot on the ground. If that's the case then how do I know that wasn't a genjutsu you showed me before back in the academy? Give me some more proof, Dobi. How strong are you? Sasuke asked. Naruto wanted to roll his eyes. Honestly, humans and proof. Was believing in something really so damn hard? Was a little faith so damn hard? Naruto was also going to have to do something about that, Dobi, title. He turned to his first general. How strong do you think I am? Naruto asked, but he quickly corrected himself. 
Scratch that. How strong, do you want me to be? The blonde asked with a raised eyebrow. Sasuke opened his mouth but quickly closed it. Truth be told, he wanted Naruto to be talking out of his ass about how strong he actually was. Yet, if he was then Sasuke was going to be very irritated that all of this had happened, and he hadn't gotten any stronger. Then there was that irritating smile on Naruto's face. Why did the dead last seem like he knew what Sasuke was thinking? The Uchiha didn't like it. However, as much as he didn't like this situation, he did not like Itachi more. Sasuke balled his fists. He then gave the blonde a heated glare. Naruto could have warmed his ramen with that heat. I don't care what happens to me so long as I kill Itachi. If you're strong enough to do that then I don't care what you have me do. However, I am not going to follow someone weaker than me. One lucky knockout doesn't make you better than me, Sasuke said. The smile that suddenly appeared on Naruto's face unnerved him. Hell, Yukumo thought the boy was utterly insane with what she was hearing. She saw the blonde turn to her. And you? He asked. Yukumo stiffened. Images of how she would look as a mighty general flashed through her head. Pictures and visions of coming home to her family's warm faces, telling her just how proud they were of her, and how much she had grown. She couldn't take it. I've heard many unfavorable things about you, Naruto-san. However, I will decide on my own what to believe, Yukumo said. Naruto's grin must have shown on his face because both were worried when he held out his hand to them both. Oh trust me, I have much in store for the two of you, he said. They shook his head and a feeling of dread came through them. It was almost as if, they had signed away their souls. The Kyubi Jinchuriki nodded and turned around. Well, all right then. Just so you can tell how vastly superior I am to you, I'll give you a small glimpse at what I can do Dadbeo. Naruto said as he slammed his hands together. Sasuke and Yukumo suddenly gasped when Naruto's body exploded in chakra. The smile never left his face. This, couldn't have been ordinary chakra for it changed from a solid blue color to a vibrant, godly yellow. The ground shook beneath their feet. They fell back away from him. Neither could form words in their mouths when they saw Naruto slam his hands on the ground. Know thy name and be torn asunder. Naruto called before he raised his body and, snapped his fingers. In an instant, the shaking stopped. His chakra dissipated. Naruto seemed very pleased with himself. All right, I'll see you guys in three days for training. Come back here when you're free. Bye bye Naruto said, slowly vanishing out of their sight. Sasuke and Yukumo watched him leave, but neither could say anything. He, hadn't done anything. Where was the proof? As he vanished away, the wind whispered his words. Oh, and I wouldn't stand there if I were you. This place is going to be swarming with shinobi in maybe five minutes. You're my generals, I'd rather not see you be my pancakes, Naruto said before there was nothing left of him. Not even one minute later did Sasuke and Yukumo notice the area around them grow darker. The moon was no longer in view. Yukumo looked up. She, she really wished she hadn't. The Uchiha followed her view and all strength left his body. Both quickly came to understand the power of Naruto fucking Uzumaki. Both children watched as five massive pillars of rock fell through the air over them. A bead of sweat fell down the raven-haired boy's face. The brown-haired girl swallowed the lump in her throat. This, had to be a genjutsu. Was, was this really Naruto's doing? They, couldn't outrun that. Those pillars of stone were going to crush them like, like some, crushinator thing. Both fell to their knees and a bright light quickly appeared over them. They glanced down and saw a massive seal light up. Quickly, their bodies were covered in light safely transporting them away. Sasuke groaned as he landed on the floor of his apartment room. Yukumo groaned when she roughly landed in her bed and dropped to the ground. Both coughed, but not even a second later did a thunderous crash rock the land of fire and Kanahagakur. Heavy winds and dust blasted through the village. Neither dared open their windows, but they could feel their respective buildings shake. 
The sounds of chaos filled the ears as people screamed for their lives. They both understood and feared, who they had just been aligned with. Meanwhile, Naruto cursed when his house of cards fell down due to the shaking. Fuck. That's the fifth time, he said and brushed the cards away. You do realize you increase the difficulty by like, over 9000 times with that jutsu of yours. Why even bother? There are much easier solutions, Kayubi asked. The blonde leaned his head back and felt the rumbling earth. Even now, he could sense dozens of shinobi going to investigate. Don't you know Kurama-chan? Kayubi snarled at the suffix but listened anyway. Everyone loves rock and roll. Naruto uttered with a massive laugh. Despite himself, the Kayubi laughed as the ground shook violently around them.